Good morning. Thank you for joining us and welcome back to Engadget's live continuing coverage of CES 2021. I am Chris Velasco, senior mobile editor here at Engadget, and I will be the first to note that for quite some time now, CES hasn't really been a huge show for smartphones. So it is nice when we phone nerds do get a bit of news. And this year, quite a bit of that news came from TCL. Now, if you're familiar with the TCL brand at all, it's probably because of the strength of its TVs. I hear they're actually quite nice, but the company smartphone shops simply cannot be denied. For years, they made devices under the Alcatel brand, which many of you are aware of. More recently, they were one of the major stewards of the BlackBerry brand, making devices like the BlackBerry Key 1 and Key 2. And after all of that, TCL decided, well, hey, isn't it time we just start making our own smartphones under our own name? Joining me to talk about the process of stepping out of the shadows and charting a path forward in mobile is Stefan Strait, the General Manager of Global Marketing at TCL Communications. Stefan, thanks for being here. It's early for me, but very late for you. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Chris, for having me. Uh, it's always a, a hallmark of CES when you and I get to catch up. And I feel like I tend to ask you many of the same things just because I like to check in and get a sense of where TCL is. So I, I think it would be nice to just sort of let that process play out in public a little bit. Um, before we get into the news of 2021, I want to take a few moments to just quickly look back at the year that was for TCL. Um, give us a sense of how TCL's first smartphone launches in 2020 went. So yeah, we actually, we feel uh, we have our first anniversary, our first birthday, because we launched our first uh, TCL 10 series just one year ago at TCL, uh, at the CES 2020. And it was a very busy year. We uh, in total have launched um, seven smartphones during this year, but also we have added more product categories like tablets, like headphones, like uh, wearable products. And we launched this, of course, across all the different regions in, uh, across the world. It was, from that perspective, a very busy year, but also it was a very difficult year due to the pandemic, of course. Uh, some of the launches we had to postpone and we had to be very flexible to adjust, uh, you know, certain go-to-market strategies. But overall, we are very happy with uh, what we could bring to the market, uh, even these difficult market environments, you know. And uh, the first year is always very special. Uh, but this is just the beginning for us. That's why we also, you know, very proud of that we can now go into the second year and have even more new products to bring to the market. As, that's right. It is the first anniversary. I remember being uh, in a, a hotel like briefing room or conference room with you talking about the TCL 10 series last year. And uh, there, there were a line of questions that I wanted to get to, but you did raise an interesting point, And that's one that we all simply sort of cannot forget. 2020 was a difficult year for so many reasons, especially because of the impact uh, the pandemic had on the way we approach our daily life. And because of that, business has sort of had to deal with these dramatically different conditions on the fly. Uh, can you just give us a sense of how TCL has sort of managed working through COVID with respect to its product design process and more broadly how you're getting stuff to market now? So, um, yes, indeed, it was it was uh, a lot of unknown challenges when we, you know, had to cope with uh, over the entire year. Uh, we from the TCL side, I, I consider us also being a bit lucky that uh, we could manage to have, uh, during the entire time, no factory closing. So our supply chain, our manufacturing process uh, was always up and running. Uh, that helped a lot, so to say, uh, to, of course, you know, continue to roll out the products. The biggest challenge in that sense we had really when it comes to the go to market to launch the product. So, you know, if a certain country suddenly goes into a lockdown situation and you come with a new brand to the market, um, that is something which you which you mainly want to launch into the stores that people can touch and feel it. So that that required some flexi flexibility and agility to adjust the plans. Overall, as a company, um, I would say, you know, some areas, some product categories, uh, they actually have uh, you know, enjoyed a good growth. Uh, specifically, I would call like the TV product category uh, is performing very strong, and and it's not so much as a surprise because you know there is not much entertainment for for any of us outside of the home. So there's no more cinema, there's no more you know theater or concerts or or we can go to sports events. So a lot of the entertainment or entire entertainment uh, is is happening home. So. People have upgraded their home entertainment system. 
Um, so this we have enjoyed a bit on the TV side, but also in other product category at the beginning of the pandemic, we could also see like refrigerators or deep freezers actually <laughs> uh, had some good momentum in certain markets. Um, we all understand why. And also specifically the tablet product category has has shown some, some very nice growth as well. Typically what you see is like our lives are happening right now in front of screens. So, you know, this is something that people have upgraded their home when it comes to entertainment, but as well, you know, our offices are home, but also our school rooms for the kids, they're somehow home now. And they also need to have tools to attend the schools going forward. Yeah, the, it's not surprising to hear sort of further investments in what seem like very home band categories. Appliances, televisions, of course, we're spending all of our time at home. And in many cases, our televisions are our primary window to the world, as it were. So it's, again, no surprise to see people sort of investing more heavily in that. Uh, I, I'm sure I can't get you to talk about hard numbers, but I, I think a sort of a broad overview would suffice. And just in terms of sales, as far as TCL's first wave of smartphones go, is the company satisfied? Could it be doing better? What's the general temperature inside TCL there? Um, we are we are satisfied uh, overall. Uh, we also, you know, we we of course we we always have quite aggressive plans uh, within TCL because uh, we are running a business, of course. But um, we also are realistic uh, that you know bring such a new proposition and a new brand to the market that uh, requires some time, and we need to convince the consumers. We need to convince our channel partners and everything. Uh, we need to prove, you know, that we can deliver, that we can execute. So, of course, we need to also have realistic uh, objectives when they go to the market for the first year. Uh, for that, you know, uh, in a way, we are very satisfied and very happy with, specifically during this difficult time, that we could actually execute all the launches we had, uh, that we can bring so many products to the market, you know, despite all of the challenge, challenges, which, again, in a way, proves um, to our partners in the market, to the customers, to the channels, uh, as well, that uh, TCL can really execute, you know. And specifically, maybe let me call out the product like the TCL 10 uh, 5G UW for the U.S. market, which we did in partnership with Verizon. Um, you know, that shows as well the capabilities uh, that TCL has because we are, we are not a new company, we're just a new brand. So, you know, all this uh, experience we have, but also the expertise in doing such products to bring, so to say, you know, the most affordable 5G device into the Verizon portfolio supporting all the bands. That is quite a significant achievement and we're very happy about the, the progress so far. That's great to hear, and I'm glad you brought up uh, what feels to be like a very interesting point. TCL, obviously, a fairly new name as far as smartphone as far as smartphones go, at least when it comes to selling devices under the TCL brand. But as you point out, TCL is not a new or a young company. This is very, very far from a startup. Lots of history in sort of production and sort of innovation. But uh, with that in mind, can you give us a sense of you know anything TCL might have learned in uh, from its smartphone launches in 2020 that it's now sort of using to its benefit as it goes into 2021? Well, uh, there's there's a couple of dimensions on this. Uh, the first dimension is you needed to learn and adapt how you do marketing. You know, um, in a way, we needed to adapt to the situation where consumers are into now today. That I, I said before, you know, everybody's spending much more time home, and you know, the, the, we had a priority focus when it comes to uh, using digital marketing and online marketing. This becomes even more important, and you need to create certain assets like. Uh, video assets, which which somehow give the consumers uh, also the opportunity that they really get all the information about the product. Because as I said, you know, for, for many people, it is very difficult to go to a store or that you didn't have an opportunity to go to the store. So we, of course, try to adapt a bit our marketing assets and also our marketing strategy uh, to this. And then, of course, on top, um, uh, when you look like coming with a new brand to the market, uh, I think, you know, um, some of the launch promotions which we did in certain markets where, you know, you could, uh, when you buy a TCL smartphone, you could get for a certain time a free TV from TCL or some free headphones. Those have been very successful and we see like uh, promotional uh, opportunities or promotional activities are very important um, during this time. So, so, you know, people or consumers have um, 
They're a bit more cautious about how much money they spend. They um, educate themselves very clearly about uh, what products uh, they want to go for. And they look very much like, what do I get, so to say, for the money I invest? And what is the value I get in return? And that is something we learned and, and, and we need to continue to do. This is with the benefit that TCL is anyhow targeting these more affordable price segments. And we are not, not really going into these uh, super premium price segments. It's a great point. Uh, I remember us speaking quite candidly about the sort of sales synergies that TCL could potentially bring to bear as far as getting people interested in their smartphones. And as you point out, there have been promotions, at least in some markets, where, yeah, you get to you buy a phone and you get a free TV or vice versa. And I, to correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like we have not seen these promotions really sort of take shape in North America yet. Is that a priority for TCL? Uh, well, North America is a top priority for us, definitely. Um, this is it has to do a little bit with um, with the channel structure in in some of the markets. So North America is, uh, as we all know, a heavy carrier driven market, and we have strong carrier, um, um, so to say, uh, relationship. And this was a bit our focus. Uh, but you you mentioned about the synergies we are looking at uh, building this in the channels. So yes, our TVs obviously are sold much more into the retail channel, okay? And TCL Mobile is more you know strong when it comes to the carrier business. But this is the synergies we want to build uh, going forward even more. So benefit from our position in the retail channel with the TV products, and then bring so to say the mobile product range in there, and vice versa. Also looking at ways how we can bring the TV products more into the carrier channels. In a number of markets, this is already working pretty well. Um, so uh, you know, in Europe, there has been a few countries where we sold directly TCL TVs into carrier channels, which are building some kind of a conversion story. So this is this is something you know we're learning a lot in the first year, and in some markets we try certain promotions, then we see how it works, and we take the best practice cases as well and apply it to the um, to the to the other countries. In the US, definitely our focus uh, has been uh, strongly on uh, launching uh, the first 5G together with Verizon. That is clearly this was a, a very significant project for us, and then of course we made sure that the other products are more like in the retail and then the open market available. But this is you know you will see more and more promotions. You will see more like this holistic approach happening for the total uh, consumer electronics portfolio from TCL because also we feel that is something we can bring additional to the market, and we are not just a pure smartphone player. That's absolutely true. And, and just a couple of quick things I want to note here. Uh, we spent a lot of time sort of building up the background and sort of what TCL brings into 2021. But before we dig into the company's 2021 announcements here at CES 2021, I feel like we've mentioned Verizon a few times. I do. I should point out here that Verizon is Engadget's parent company. They enjoy no editorial control. They have no control over what we say on stream or publish. And that's not why we're having the conversation with TCL. It just sort of happened that way. Uh, but yeah, no control over us and we're going to continue doing what it is that we do here at Engadget. So, Stefan, with that said, moving on into TCL's 2021 announcements, we have, among other things, we are, we're looking at the new TCL 20 SE, the TCL 25G. Can you tell us a bit about these devices and sort of how do they fit into the overall strategy for TCL this year? Yeah, so, you know, last year we started uh, with the TCL 10 series, uh, which uh, has been three products, so to say, at CES. Uh, this year we're going to introduce the TCL 20 series, uh, which is a family of five products, which are all coming to the market uh, in the first couple of months this year. But specifically, um, the first two products which uh, which are already coming to the market or are on the market today or coming this month in the market is the TCL 25G and the TCL 20 SE. The TCL 20 5G is our most affordable 5G device uh, coming to the market now. Um, this brings, so to say, the price you know, to the next level that even more users can enjoy 5G. So this has started to sell already in Europe. Um, for below uh, 300 euro, it's 299 euro, and we continue to roll it out in a number of markets. Um, um, and it's very important for us that we can bring 5G to even more consumers across the world. And the second product is our most affordable um, TCL smartphone so far, which is the TCL 20 SE. And this is kind of a little bit of an entertainment piece, um, very large screen, uh, you know, dual speakers and, and the 5,000 milliamp 
amp battery, which really lets you watch videos for 17 hours nonstop, if you like. Uh, and, and this product is positioned at a price below 150 euros. Uh, and it's coming as well to the market in January. So, you know, the other three devices we're going to launch soon, and we're going to disclose more information very soon in a few weeks. And they're still coming at early uh, this year to the market. So we feel like we have a very um, strong lineup in total, and we're going to want to want to really get going from the beginning of the year with new products, with upgraded products, and, and bring new innovation to the market. We're certainly looking forward to testing both of these new TCL smartphones. I, I'm actually particularly interested in the TCL 20 SE just because, as you point out, it's a not it's a not expensive device, right? This is, I believe, you said 179 euro somewhere in that neighborhood. But you are looking at an enormous screen and what looks to be a pretty uh, sort of impressive list of entertainment specs. Among other things, I believe it has a high-res audio certification, uh, pretty good cameras around back. I'm very interested to see how this stacks up against the many, many devices, especially, I mean, there's not a lot of really standout devices in that price range. So maybe this is it. We'll have to see. Uh, there's something I do want to clarify, though. So as you and I have been talking about TCL smartphone plans. You've mentioned, I believe, a few times now that the TCL 20 series will be comprised of five devices. That's all kind of launching within the first couple months of 2021. But last year, you launched seven smartphones, all towards roughly uh, mid-year and onwards, uh, at least in large part. What what happens after the first few months? Is the 20 series just those five phones? And if so, where does TCL's trajectory sort of go from there? Well, this is just the beginning, of course. Uh, there will be more things to come. Um, we have also said that you can expect uh, the first TCL product this year coming with a foldable, flexible display. We can talk about this a bit later. But there's a number of more products, uh, of course, coming as well uh, towards mid of the year. And then we have uh, some more surprises uh, in the second half this year. We just, you know, uh, for us, it is very important that we are not just uh, showing like, okay, now two phones, and then we come back in a, in a few weeks and say like, oh, here is another phone, and then there's another phone. We want to show like that we think about this more as a portfolio and as a family. And, and of course, there will be more, more phones around these five phones. Um, and we, we just, you know, we have quite a fast pace in rolling out of these. And it doesn't mean that all these five phones or, you know, in last year, all the seven phones, that they are all available in one single country. There is mm -hmm. There are some regional variants, and we are looking at addressing you know, certain uh, market segments uh, specifically. But we want to be very flexible. TCL is strong in delivering products, and therefore we want to use this opportunity as well to address certain market segments and also have some regional variants uh, to, to really capture some market share very fast. So just to put a finer point on it, I mean, just looking at TCL's early momentum going into 2021 versus its entire launch portfolio in 2020, it seems safe to assume that you're going to outpace the number of uh, smartphone launches compared to last year by a significant amount. Are we looking at a really big year in terms of volume from TCL? Um, well, you know, is uh, yes, for us, you know, after the first year, of course, we want to have more volume in the second year. That is also clear. Um, but still, remember that you know we're going to be very realistic what is possible and um, this is something we we have still the opportunity our alcatel business is uh, still running and is very very important for us we're going to continue to to you know keep alcatel because that is a well established uh, proposition in the entry segment uh, together with the carriers and there is nothing will change about that so this helps us as well to give a little bit of time to the TCL brand and, and uh, you know, let the brand grow in a sustainable way. And therefore, you know, volumes, of course, are always important. But in the first few years uh, of TCL Mobile, it's also very important that we establish TCL Mobile as a, as a significant player in the market, because we look at this with a long term perspective. And, you know, we talked about this as well many times is about our, our capability now longer term to bring foldable and flexible and bendable and rollable display products. That's where we can really, we believe like we can be disruptive and can be very innovative and bring more, you know, different use factors based on different form factors to the market. And this is one of the key strengths and differentiators from TCL. So, yes, volumes are always important, right? But 
let's be realistic, it's going to be bigger than the, the last year. Uh, we will have even more products. We're going to have more product categories. So we're building this and we're building it with a fast pace and, and rolling it out as well in more markets. Gotcha. That's fair enough. And we've mentioned the sort of TCL's public ambitions to do a foldable or flexible, sorry, flexible display device at some point in 2021, which which leads me to something I've been meaning to ask you for quite some time. I mean, we've seen some very interesting trends kind of firm up in the back half of 2020. Budget smartphones, uh, quite a big thing going on, mostly because people are just generally more conscious of what they're spending, especially on sort of frivolous or non-essential items like smartphones that tend to last quite a while anyway. Uh, we've seen the rise of really innovative new form factors. Foldables, I think, had a moment in 2020 pretty uh, noticeably. So from your from your perch over there at TCL, what are the hot spots? What do smartphone makers need to be focusing on right now in order to stay competitive and kind of relevant in a rapidly changing space? So, um, you know, we, we definitely, there's, there's the, the main trends we see in the market is is around 5G. That is a new technology which, you know, it makes everything faster. And, and again, we spend so much time in front of the screen and now at home. In certain countries, you know, maybe the fixed internet is not that great or is quickly overloaded if everybody stays home, works from home or watches Netflix from home or other streaming services. So you see actually also users starting to uh, choose like a mobile device or opens the hotspot or uh, starting to use 5G because it's a great experience and you have um, un uninterrupted kind of video streaming. Uh, so this is, you know, that's why 5G also to bring this next year or this year into the mass market to more consumers. I think you will see a lot of push when it comes from the carrier side, but also you will see like the, from many players in the market that everybody will bring, so to say, their more affordable 5G devices into the market. So 5G definitely one of the key trends. The other big trend we see is like IoT devices continue to grow. People will uh, use multiple devices and somehow they need to be all connected to each other. Um, that is clearly a trend which is continued to grow. And then really for us is about, you know, bringing innovation to the market when it comes about the foldable, flexible, bendable, rollable category. We always said we don't want to be first or we have no ambition to rush to the market. For us, it's more important to deliver a mature consumer experience, but also make sure that the product actually lives up to what the consumer is expecting. There's a couple of challenges with this category, which is, you know, the, the displays, but then the mechanics and also the user experience, which you need to deliver. And I think we feel now this is coming to the stage that you will see more and more products during um, this year. Uh, but this will create kind of a new product category on the market, and it will give more choice to the users. It's, a looking, uh, it's, it's kind of going back a little bit when we all had feature phones, you know. You might like a clamshell or a slider or bar type kind of phone. And this again gives choice because for the last 10 years, we all use, so to say, the same form factor of smartphones. I'm glad you said that. This really, it's, it feels very much like we're in the early days of Android, right? Where you had sort of QWERTY sliders, you had weird sort of swiveling devices. Uh, People had not really figured out what the best way to sort of design a smartphone was yet. It was still very much up in the air. So we saw tremendous creativity, and it's very gratifying to see us kind of swinging back to that. Um, speaking of sort of novel designs and innovation, as you've said, TCL has plans to do some really interesting stuff with uh, possibly flexible displays this year. And I would just invite you, anything at all you can tell us about the device that L uh, TCL plans to release this year, what would I think be hugely illuminating for our viewers? <laughs> well, I cannot disclose that uh, yet, uh, <laughs> but we have, as you, you know, we, we shared with you guys as well, uh, many different prototypes. And uh, also what we can say, like, of course, we didn't share everything, right? Some secrets we have as well, uh, but we have more than three dozens of different prototypes, form factors and playing with this. And we are not shy to show these uh, form factors and prototypes, these concepts, because we want to learn, we want to hear as well what people think about it. What is an interesting exercise is actually if you put all of these different products on a table and let's say you take 20 of them and you ask 20 people, you get 20 different opinions. Everybody has a different you know, preference mm -hmm. and you can think like, oh my God, which one should we do? I actually think it's great 
because again, it you can you can start to create products which maybe is not for everybody the same, and you can be more targeted to certain use cases or user groups. And I think this is becoming more fun again. It's also you know from a marketing job is much more interesting, because otherwise we just talk about more or less the same all the time. And this is um, so we cannot disclose really which one becomes, but we continue as well to show other things which you know. Maybe is coming in two, three years only. We've uh, we showed the 17-inch kind of um, um, printed OLED display concept, which you can roll on two sides. So this, we want to get feedback. What think the, the people and the users? What will they do with it, right? And we can learn, and then we can improve it and refine it. And then at some point, you know, when we feel like yes, this is now the right moment, then of course we're going to bring it to the market. You heard it here, folks. If you have feedback about TCL's wild concept devices, please let TCL know directly. But since we're talking about concepts anyway, Stefan, I know I couldn't get you to talk about what the company's upcoming sort of intriguing phone is going to be, but let's let's turn it around a bit. I, we've known for quite some time that TCL has been working on a bunch of very interesting concept devices. One that immediately springs to mind, that sort of trifold phone that uh, unfolds to become mm -hmm. a tablet. Uh, and and cl LT, clearly, TCL has been at this for years. So looking back at sort of what TCL has done so far, are there any concepts, are there any sort of potential designs for these devices that TCL has done and said, no, this actually won't work the way that we want it to? Um, there is, uh, there's a number of these, yes. And, you know, the, the trifold as such is, is very interesting product because it shows different use cases. You can use it as a phone, you can use it as a tablet, and you can use it as a 10 inch tablet. But at the end, end of the day, you need to accept it's like three phones thick. Okay. But for us, that concept was very much about understanding how, wh what happens if you combine what we call a butterfly hinge, which is folding inside, and what is happening with a dragon hinge, which is folding outside. This, you know, stretches the display in many different ways. And this we needed to understand what happens, what people think. So a lot of people, they, they, they loved it. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you have like a product which is three phones thick and also heavy, and then uh, also people get a little bit like, oh, are you sure you want to do this? Um, this is, for example, a product which probably you will not see in a first wave. But something I cannot disclose, we learned a lot from this product. And we actually found some really, really clever solutions for something which is, might be very similar. So that is maybe something then you will see as, as a new concept, which is combining other things. But, um, you know, these kind of three use cases, uh, bring them together into one product. So this is things, you know, we, we learn a lot by showing these products and put it in people's hands. Uh, that tells us how they think they should use it and if it's too heavy, too big or too small or what they love to do with the products. That, that gives us a lot of good feedback and then we can just do a better product when we come to the market with it. That's great insight. Stefan, I'm not going to needle you for more information about this device. You just clearly will not tell me about it, and that's fine. Uh, we're, we've got about two minutes left. I want to pivot to one last question that touches on something you brought up earlier, and that is the importance of 5G to TCL's product strategy. Give us a sense of how popular the 5G phones in your portfolio were compared to the rest of your lineup and how you see that mix changing over time. Um, the 5G technology is becoming more and more popular. Okay, um, this um, this uh, we're still early with 5G. We need to be clear. Okay, um, but you know we did also some crazy things where we put 5G into an AK TV here in China, and people thought like, well, why do you do that? But of course, in China it's like this that most of the people they don't have any fixed internet or Wi-Fi at home. Their life is completely on mobile internet, and there it makes perfect sense to do something like this. So yes, you know, we see now more and more, specifically in the Christmas business, we saw that the 5G devices have enjoyed a good growth and a good momentum. That's, you know, now we're just introducing very early in the year the next 5G device on a lower price level. So we are convinced you will see 5G growing uh, very fast during uh, this, this year to come. Well, Stefan, thank you for the update. We really appreciate your time, especially as, again, we know it's quite late over there. Uh, thank you for putting TCL's launches in perspective. And we're looking forward to testing these new devices. Uh, that's it for our conversation with TCL about its path forward in the mobile marketplace. 